Hello, Keith Rucker at VengeMachinery.org. Well, guys, we're back on to making, finishing up this little project on this little uh, cross slide nut and a new thread. And I'm doing this for a YouTube viewer. I'm way behind schedule on it. Just things have come up and one challenge after another trying to get this done. Uh, and the surface grinder getting it going has been a big part of this because we've got the nut made and, and that was actually in a previous video. I'll put a link here down in the description uh, if you want to go back and look at how we made this uh, bronze nut. Um, and if you remember from that video, we used this uh, tap that I was able to find. Now the original is uh, original thread here is a eight thread per inch in its um, square threads. Uh, square threads are, in today's term, more or less obsolete. Uh, they were used a lot in the, in, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and they basically were replaced uh, in, in more modern days by Acme threads. And the reason being is that square threads, uh, while are very accurate from the standpoint of moving like a cross slide or a lead screw, uh, they're, they're difficult to machine. Uh, that's in from a production standpoint, it really slowed things down because those sides were perfectly square. Uh, but when you put a little bit of angle to them, uh, which is basically what an Acme thread does, uh, it makes it much easier to machine the parts uh, and you don't really give up a whole lot in accuracy. So my original plan, as I've talked about with this nut, was to use Acme, but I couldn't find a left-hand Acme tap uh, of the right size at eight threads per inch of this diameter. Uh, eight threads per inch is not the standard pitch for, I think this is half inch. Uh, so it's kind of an oddball thing, particularly a left-hand thread. I got on eBay though and I found this tap. And this is a 10 degree modified square thread, which quite honestly is more, more along the lines of the original and uh, is, is and from an accuracy standpoint, it's probably a little bit better than Acme in this application. So I picked this up for fairly cheap. That's what we use. Now the challenge is, is I gotta make the actual thread. Uh, and to do that, I couldn't find an insert with that 10 degree modified um, profile on it. So we're gonna have to grind one. And I wanted to use a surface grinder to do that, and that's really what must have been my challenge, getting the surface grinder ready. But the topic of this video today is going to be grinding that custom cutter uh, to use. So before we get into this, I'm going to take you over to the whiteboard. I want to show you what we have to cut, uh, show you some of the math involved, and go about how we're going to set up to do this. All right, so we're over here at the whiteboard now, and I want to actually show you the difference in these threads. So this is a square thread that we're talking about. And as you can see, it's, it's 90 degrees on each shoulder. And from a machining standpoint, you have drag on your tool. You basically have to have a tool to go in here and you have to have to relieve it back to get in here. And you are plunging straight in. You're actually doing your cut on the bottom uh, of the cut, where normally what you really like to do on, a, on threading is cut on the side. Uh, so it's, it's completely doable. You can do it. I've actually cut uh, square threads before. I think I've actually got a, a uh, real early one of my videos is showing me do it. I don't think I really talk about it a lot, but it's actually showing me machining uh, some sh square threads. Uh, but it's difficult. So again, when you put a little profile on here, put a little angle on there, you can actually start cutting off that side, makes it much easier. So this is the uh, 10 degree modified square thread. And this is what we're gonna be doing. Now you can find the specs for this, it's in Machinery's Handbook. But this is not really considered to be a standard thread and uh, I was unable anyway to find any inserts or anything already ground with this profile on here. So instead of having a perfectly square shoulder, uh, it's very similar to the square thread, but they put just a little bit of angle on here. It's a 10 degree included angle. So that's actually five degrees inset on each side. And uh, of course you have your pitch. Of course, this we're using eight threads per inch. And uh, in the machinery's handbook, it gives you the, way to, uh, the, the number to calculate uh, the thickness at the top up here is uh, 0 0.4563 of the pitch. Uh, we're eight threads per inch, uh, so the pitch is going to be one inch divided by eight, which is 0.125. So you multiply 125 times 0.4563, and what this is going to actually come out to be is uh, 0 0.057 inches. Uh, so that gives me something to, to, that I can measure while I'm cutting these threads to, to see if I'm in there. 
Uh, as far as the depth goes, it's basically the pitch is the depth. So again, that's 0.125. In reality, uh, Machinery's Handbook says you need to have some clearance, so additional depth in there, uh, but it doesn't specify what that clearance is. So since we've got the nut already made, we're just gonna machine this thread form to fit the nut. So we'll actually be testing the nut over there on there. But that 0.125 number gives me something to work off of. Uh, I know it's going to probably a little bit be a little bit deeper than that. So here's the job of today, and the and the, the the what we're going to be doing in this video is we got to make a cutter. And I'm just going to make this out of high speed steel. I think I got a quarter inch blank, and uh, the top, as you can see, you know, we got to basically match that profile. We'll do that 10 degree included angle, so five degrees on each side. Uh, on there and we'll have to do some grinding to get that down. Additionally, there's gonna have to be some back angle on the bottom. So this is kind of looking at that cutter from the front and we have to have clearance on there as well. Uh, so the, what we're gonna be actually grinding on the surface grinder is gonna be a compound angle. Uh, now this clearance, it's, it's a bit of an arbitrary number. 15 degrees is kind of a standard to use. It doesn't have to be exactly 15. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, and it'd probably be just fine. But we're gonna go with 15 degrees on that back angle. Uh, so basically what we've gotta do is set up to grind both a five degree angle and a 15 degree angle at the same time on that cutter head, or on that cutter. And to do that, I'm gonna use a uh, compound sign plate uh, on the surface grinder. So let's go over here and we'll get that set up and show you the process. So we're gonna be setting all this up over here on the surface plate and uh, I wanna make sure I got the surface plate clean. Now a lot of people you will use a surface plate cleaner, uh, which is perfectly fine. When I took my scraping class, Richard King who teaches the class says, hey guys, just use Windex. It's cheap, you got it around the house and uh, basically it does everything that surface plate cleaner does. So set that down. What I'm gonna do is just squirt it down real good. I'm gonna take some clean paper towels. We'll uh, wipe this up. I'm just trying to make sure we got all the grit, dust, all that kind of good stuff off of here. We'll uh, just wipe her down real good. And uh, after that's done, we'll just let this dry. And it just usually takes a couple of seconds uh, once you get all of it off. And you can, I can actually see it drying right here in front of me. So we'll give that a second to dry off. Okay, with the surface plate nice and dry now, I'm gonna make sure my hands are clean and I have, and we're just gonna kind of wipe this off again with your hands. And even after that cleaning, you know, I can feel just a little bit of dust. And it's probably just a lint off of that rag more than anything else but it's amazing what your hand can feel on here. And you wanna just get this perfectly clean. Anytime I come up to use a surface plate, I'll always wipe it uh, with my hand before I actually put anything down on it. Even if I have blue on it, I'm gonna take it and wipe my hand on there and take any dust off. So anyway, this is nice and clean. So let's go ahead and get set up to set up my uh, angle block, sign plate. All right, I got my compound sign plate here. And I've already stoned the bottom of this. Anytime I use this, I always uh, stone it real quick. Again, I'm just gonna wipe the surface plate even though it's only been a couple of seconds. Make sure we don't have any dust over here. And we will gently put this down on the surface plate. Okay, so let me zoom you in on this and kind of show you this sign plate and how it works. So this is my compound sign plate that we're gonna be using today. Now a sign plate is similar to a sign bar and basically it's used for making a very precise angle. And uh, you do that, if you look on this, it's, it's hinged in one direction, so it hinges in this direction and it also in this case hinges in this direction as well. So you can actually do a compound angle with this. Now the reason it's called a sign bar or sign plate is uh, to calculate your angle, you have to use some trigonometry and the sine function uh, to calculate how much you want to, how much uh, blocks or how much material you want to put up underneath this to get the angle that you want. So I know that from the center of this pin here over to there's a little bar up under the bottom, that's exactly five inches. So you basically calculate 
what you have to calculate is this side of a right triangle. Uh, we know that the hypotenuse is always five inches and we can use uh, some mathematics to calculate how much material we need to put up underneath this uh, using gauge blocks. And uh, we have to do that in both directions in this case on this particular plate. So um, again, let's um, do some math. Uh, we'll calculate those values in there uh, for how much we have to jack it up in the two directions to get the angles that we want. All right, so back to the whiteboard and some good old fashioned uh, mathematics here. This is actually gonna be trigonometry. So remember back when you took uh, algebra and trigonometry back in high school and you said, oh, I'll never need that stuff. Today we're gonna need it. So here's the problem. Uh, we've got to solve for how high of a stack of gauge blocks we need to put under this side here in a right triangle. Uh, so we know what we want our angle to be. We know the length of the hypotenuse, C, and we need to solve for A. And the mathematic formula to do that is actually very, fairly simple. What you need to do is calculate the sine of this angle here and just simply multiply it times this side here and that will give you this value. So side A equals sine of big A times the length of side C. So uh, to calculate sine, there's multiple ways of doing it. If you've got a good scientific calculator, you can just punch it right in. That's the easiest thing to do. If you don't have that, um, you can go to your machinery's handbook and inside your machinery's handbook, there in the very front, there's a whole set of trigonomic uh, tables that will tell you uh, these values. Uh, so I look and look up the sine of five degrees. It's point zero point zero eight seven one five. The sine of 15 degrees is 0 0.25882. So I multiply these two numbers times five, and that tells me how high my stack needs to be. Uh, so for a five degree angle with a five inch uh, sine here, or, or side, uh, my stack needs to be 0 0.4358 inches high. And for 15 degrees, it needs to be 1.2941 inches high. And uh, I'll show you how to do this uh, on a scientific calculator real quick. So to do this, I'm just going to use the calculator on my iPhone here. So I've got a little app on here for calculator. This is just the standard one that comes in here. When it comes up, normally in this mode, it's just a regular calculator. But if you turn your phone sideways, uh, it turns into a scientific calculator. You get a whole other set of functions. So down here we have sine, cosine, and tangent. So for five degrees, I'm going to type in five. I'll hit the sine button. That'll give me that number that we had a while ago for uh, sine. And then I'm going to multiply that times five, which is the length of that side. That's the stack that I need for five degrees. Uh, for 15 degrees, same process, 15 degrees, sine times five equals boom, 1.294, and we'll round that to one ten thousandth of an inch there. So there you go. It's that easy. And if all this is still too complicated for you, there's an even easier way to do it. You can actually go to the Suburban Tool website. Suburban Tool makes sign plates and sign bars a lot of, along with a lot of other tools. And they actually have a little form on their website uh, that you can put in uh, the length of your, your side here, five inches, put in your angle, and it'll calculate these numbers for you right there on the website. So multiple ways of coming up uh, with these stacks that you need to put under your sign bar or plate. So now I need to put together my stacks uh, to go up underneath the sign plate here. And I got two of them. So the first one we're gonna do is uh, the five degree stack, which again is 0.4358 inches. And I've got my gauge blocks here. Uh, these are all precision uh, thicknesses on each one of them. And uh, we'll start when you're doing a, a number here, start with in your last place on so the 10,000th uh, slot, we got an eight. And up here at the top, these are all ground down to those uh, 10 thousandths. So I'm gonna grab this one here. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, 0 0.1008 inches thick. And uh, to keep track of this, I'm gonna put my starting number in here, 0 0.4358, okay? I'm gonna subtract from that the first uh, block I'm gonna put in here, which is 0 0.1008. And I've got 335 thousandths to go. So again, I go to my last place here. I want to find something that ends with a uh, five. 
And actually, I'm going to go to 35. So I pull out my gauge block here that is 0.135. So I'm going to subtract from that minus 0.135. And that leaves me with 200 thousandths to go. So I grab my 200 thousandths gauge block here. And we'll just ring these together. So I usually just put a little oil on them, kind of rub them together and they're so flat they'll stay, they should stick. And so now we've got a stack here and I want to verify um, my gauge blocks are not as good as a new set. They don't ring together as well, but they're good enough for what we're going to do here. So now I'm going to verify that thickness. So I'm just going to get my dial calipers. You could use a micrometer here but we want to just verify that we're at 0 0.435 and a little over. So I'm going to assume that's 8 tenths. So that's my first stack. Uh, next, we'll do the same thing for the second stack, which is 1 inch 0 0.2941. So we'll start again. In that last place, we'll get the one that is... Uh, Got the one ten thousandth on it. The rest of these are to a thousandth of an inch. These up here are to your ten thousandths mark. So I'm going to subtract 0 0.1001. That leaves me one inch, 194 thousandths. So, um, you know, 94, in this case, it only goes up to 49 thousandths or a, a 50 thousandths. So we'll do half of that. So that's going to be. 44, so I'm going to find my 0.144, which is right here. Okay, so I'm going to subtract minus 0.144. So I got a hundred, one inch and 50 thousandths, so I'm going to grab my one that is 150 thousandths thick, which is this one. They don't make them less than 100 thousandths. Okay, so this one is point. 150, so we're going to subtract minus 0 0.150, and that leaves uh, 900 thousandths to go, which is this block here. And again, we'll ring all these together. And again, I'm going to take this stack, just using the dial calipers, and we are one inch, 200 and 29. Yeah, 2941, which is perfect. So that's my, my second stack. All right, there's my two stacks. So next thing I want to do is put my little tool bit on here that we're going to grind. So I just took a little Sharpie pen and I kind of just sketched that out. That's by no means accurate or to scale, but it kind of gives me an idea. I know this is the top, okay? And uh, I know that these are the sides. Now... What I want to do first is I'm going, to, I'm going to actually turn it so that the top is over on this side. And that angle needs to be 5 degrees. And then we also need to put a 15 degree uh, angle behind that. So I'm going to take my tool bit first before I do anything else. And we're just going to clamp it down here. This is not a magnetic uh, block. I wish it was that I could just uh, let the mag do it. But uh, we're going to... I see, I won't probably do it like this. Give me plenty of clearance there. But, and I wish I had a set of uh, hold downs here that was a little bit thinner as well. I've got my little one for my mini palette, but they're, they're too small. And then this set here is almost too big. Let me grab an Allen wrench. All right, so I got that up against the back rail and we'll just, uh, Tighten that up. And so again, I know that my first angle needs to come up this way. I want it to come up uh, to five degrees. So that's in this direction. I'm going to wipe down down here. I'm going to take this stack and we'll put it right up under there and let this come down onto that. So now this... Uh, plate is tilted five degrees in that direction. And I'm just going to take my Allen wrench here and we'll tighten these clamps up down here. 
there's one on each side and that will just uh, hopefully keep this thing from turning at all. A lot of these uh, sign plates will have straps on the side. These you just tighten down here and now that's, that's not moving. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to put that 15 degree back angle. So this will be the top of the cutter. So the angle needs to go in this direction. And for that, just like before, I have my stack for 15 degrees. I'm going to pull this up. We'll wipe both of those down, make sure they're clean. Put our stack in there. Let that go down. And this one here, it actually uses a uh, wrench to tighten up those hinges. And now we've got this set up. We'll leave the blocks in there. Uh, but this is set up on a compound uh, sign plate so that we're going to basically just grind this flat across the top, but we've got a five degree and a 15 degree angle on here. So I'll go get the set up on the surface plate, or on the surface grinder rather, and uh, we'll start grinding. So we're set up over here on the surface grinder now. We got all of our angles set. I got my wheel dressed. Um, I believe we're ready to go here. I'm gonna, we're just gonna kind of feed down here and touch off. And I believe we're touching right there. Yeah. So I'm just gonna start uh, slowly. Grinding this down, uh, well, about a 3,000 pass. Taking about five thousandths here per uh, cut. Probably good for that side. Uh, I'm gonna flip it around and get the other side set up now. Well, I'm back over the surface plate and we had to do some little reconfiguring to our uh, sign plate to get our angles right for the next one. We're doing the same angles, but because of the way this thing tilts, I had to rotate it a little bit and get it set up on a different corner. Uh, but we wanna do the same thing. So this is the, the top. Uh, we want it to, uh, face at five degrees going in that direction. So I'm gonna lift it up this way, clean these. I'll put my gauge block stack right here. And then we wanna have the relief going in the other direction back here. So that's gonna lift up the, here we'll put the 15 degree stack on this side and we should be ready to go. So I'm gonna get all my hinges tightened down. We'll go set this up on the surface plate or on the surface grinder and uh, we'll grind our next uh, set of angles there. So I'll feed down. We're getting a little bit of a touch off there. Got our uh, geometry right now. 
Now I gotta work on getting that ground down to the proper thickness. So uh, it's gonna take some passes here. So you can see our tool is starting to take shape down here uh, to what I'm looking for. I did my math and the calculation for the width of the tip of that is 57 thousandths. And I also went over to my tap and I measured down in the bottom of that with some calipers and I got basically 58 thousandths. So um, uh, it was probably about, had about a thousandths clearance in there. So I'm, I'm gonna shoot for trying to get it at about 50, 57, 58 thousandths on this tip. So let me get down there and measure the very end of it. All right, so right now we're at about 64 thousandths. So we got about seven thousandths more to go and uh, we'll just kind of sneak up on it. All right, I'm gonna dial in five more thousandths deep and uh, which is what I've been cutting. Uh, park that out and I'm going to come back out here we'll take another measurement see where we're at alright so that actually put me at I'm right on 58 thousandths after I sparked out and uh, I actually think that's where I'm going to leave it um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it right there. So I think this, uh, this cutter is done. All right, so let's show you what we got. There's our profile on there. Again, that's five degrees on each side, 10 degrees total. Uh, if you look on the bottom, of course, it kind of, that's just down to a knife point on the bottom. I think what I'm going to do is just go over to the grinder. and I'm just going to kind of zip some of that off just to, uh, uh, take some of that and I think I'm also going to put a little bit of a leading different edge on the front, a little different angle on the front. I just do that on by hand on the hand grinder and uh, then we can hone this thing up and I think we'll be ready to go. I came in here with the tap and it goes right down in there really nicely. Um, it looks like it's just a teeny tiny bit wide in the bottom but I, actually I want to make that groove just a little bit wider so I have some clearance in there. So that's gonna be just fine. So I think the grind is good. Like I said, let me go clean it up on the grinder, uh, hand grinder a little bit um, and hone it up. We'll be ready to start cutting some threads. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, that's all honed up good and sharp. So I think in the next video, uh, we'll be hopefully making that screw and cutting some left-handed eight thread per inch. Um, 10 degree modified square threads. Well, that's gonna be a wrap on this one, guys. Uh, some tool grinding 101. Really nice to have the surface grinder, uh, you know, on a lot of things, you know, 60 degree angle, I'll probably just grind it by hand, but this being a five degree angle, it is, that's such a difficult angle to cut, and I don't really have a standard to check it with. The surface grinder was the perfect tool for this. I know my angles are dead on. Uh, you guys got to see some grinding. You got to see some tool making. Uh, you got to see some uh, setting up a double sign plate, compound sign plate, and uh, we got the perfect cutter now to do this job. So with that, uh, that'll be it for this one. Like I said, next time we'll be making a new screw and uh, getting all this stuff threaded. So uh, stay tuned and be looking forward to that one. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.